comes pillaging and plundering my uterus, looking for an egg to ruin, who says they aren't already doing just that? He spoke cruelly. H. How? My heart began to race. That's not possible. I had my fingers inside of you more than once, and it was a perfect time for you to be artificially inseminated without even noticing. Your mind was so clouded over with pleasure that I could have done anything to you in that moment and you wouldn't have noticed a thing. His expression grew dark and malicious, and I knew he was happy about the panic he was inflicting upon me. Tell me you didn't, I demanded, my voice shaking. Surely you're not evil enough for that. Well sweet Rosalie, it looks like you'll only discover the answer to that in a few months' time. He ran a hand through his dark curls as he watched me tremble from rage and horror. You may or may not be pregnant already, who knows? Perhaps I'm just scaring you? Perhaps not. I seldom jest. I hope you trip and fall onto that axe, then slowly bleed to death cold and alone. I hissed before standing up and tugging down the hem my dress, rage dripping out of every pore. You're coming to work with me tomorrow, Kroshka. Little one, I want you by my side from now on so you can learn how things go about around here. He dictated as if nothing happened, and reached a hand up to caress my face. Be ready by 10 a.m., choke on a dick. I slapped his approaching hand, before angrily stomping away from him. Nikolai didn't do anything without carefully planning it out, so surely he wouldn't go and get me pregnant before the time? It was highly likely that he was just using this as an opportunity to terrorize me for his own sick pleasure. I already knew how upset changing plans made him and I doubted that he would do so now. But what if he did? 11. 12. I was lucky if I managed to get more than three hours of sleep. I'd spent the entire night tossing and turning with a racing heart, consumed with anxiety. After bursting into tears more than once, I realized that I had to accept my situation and deal with it. That turned out to be an extremely difficult thing to do. What if I was pregnant? I sure as hell felt sick to my stomach already, but it was probably from the stress. Despite having pale, sallow skin and dark shadows under my eyes, I didn't bother doing much makeup. I was visibly exhausted and really, really unhappy. Nikolai was coming to fetch me any moment to take me to work with him today and I was pretty sure that the things I'd witnessed there would scar me for life. My appearance made me look young, unbothered and slightly ill even, which is exactly what I was. I didn't bother with a particularly fancy outfit to impress anyone and just slipped on a simple pair of shorts and crop top. A knock cut through the silence of the room just as I began to doze off at my seat by the window. Rough night smirked Nikolai when I opened the door with a heavy sigh. What do you think? I glared at him. You look like you haven't slept properly in months. He replied, because I haven't. I shrugged. That makes two of us, he muttered before wrapping an arm around my waist and pulling me to his side. Now we've got a busy day ahead of us Rosalie, so you need to wake up. What do you even do at work? Do you sit in an office all day calculating profits and things like that? Do you stand over a pot cooking meth? Do you impregnate people for fun? I grumbled. For me, work is either negotiating business deals and establishing new trade routes, going to check up on things at my brothels, nightclubs and warehouses or getting my hands dirty and eliminating my enemies. I used to be a mercenary for a few years before I took control of the family so I prefer the latter. I have people to do everything else, he explained. I want to show you how things work around here so you will stop being scared of everything. We'll start small, with just an interrogation for now. An interrogation? I mused. It makes you sound like a detective. It basically means that I'm going to torture any information I can get out of a traitor before killing him. The one I'm dealing with today tried to sabotage a huge shipment of cocaine by sending it to China instead of Afghanistan and claimed that the ship went down in a storm greedy little bastard he is, and wanted the money all for himself, although I suspect that he's working for an enemy of mine. This loss hasn't affected my business in any way but I'm still going to make an example out of him. His words were slow and well thought out. You'll pass me the knives, next time you join in the fun. How do you actually enjoy torturing and killing people? I frowned in a mixture of disgust and awe. You should try it, it's like sex, only there's a winner. 
he said simply, you are absolutely deranged. I stared at him. We all are, in some way. Twenty minutes later the two of us were seated in a silver Maserati, driving down a moderately busy highway in tense silence. You look like you're about to cry, Nikolai spoke after glancing over at me. That's just my face, I replied. I was just fucking with you by the way. A cruel smirk stretched out across his face. What? I inquired. You're not carrying my child. Not yet anyway, he said. There's no way I would change the plan if there's such a short time left for me to wait. And besides, I prefer to do things the old-fashioned way. You can't be a pregnant virgin. It is my duty to corrupt you first. For the last twelve hours I have not stopped feeling like I'm about to pass out. I've been freaking out since you told me. My voice was soft and filled with rage. What the fuck is wrong with you? You read up on ways to prevent conception. He noted. I'm motoring your internet usage. Well what did you expect? I hissed. I was panicking. Another reason why I didn't get you pregnant just as yet. He stated. I want to be able to constantly have you under my watch. I didn't do that with my first wife and she went and induced a miscarriage. That is one of the reasons why I plan things first. There is less chance of failure that way. If you let me wait a few more years then I'd be willing to give this a try. I said. I would actually have time to mentally prepare myself for motherhood. You kidnapped me and gave me a month before I have to get pregnant. If I was younger then that is what I would have done. Nikolai pondered for a few moments before speaking. But I am not getting any younger now, and I have my entire life planned out. I must have a child before forty, not a screaming infant. I first saw you a few months ago and I know that you out of many other ideal women, were the one for me. I don't know how you expect a child to grow and develop properly with a father like you. I snapped. I will be a good parent, mark my words, but in order for that to happen sacrifices must be made. He replied. I can be a good husband but I can tear you apart if I wanted. It is entirely your choice. Disobey me and you will only revive pain, and I'm not talking about a bruised ass. I take pain surprisingly well so you'll have a tough time breaking me. My father couldn't succeed so neither can you, I said. Either you kill me or let me be. I know, which is why I have not had you punished the usual way. Humiliation is your weakness, not pain. You've come to enjoy the pain I inflict. I don't want to harm you the way your father did and I don't want to kill you, although I've noticed you have some suicidal tendencies so you might just do that for me. His hand found its way to my bare knee and traced circles onto the skin. What have I done to deserve this? I cringed away from his touch. All my life I've been tormented by men. I just want to live in peace, but you are hell-bent on destroying me. This is not your destruction. His blue eyes locked with mine. This is your birth. Nikolai held my wrist in an iron grip as he led me into an old warehouse on the outskirts of the city. The only people nearby were heavily armed men that were loading several large crates onto a truck. What is this place? I asked as I surveyed my surroundings. It was dark and dingy in here and there were containers and crates everywhere. I wondered what they held. This is one of my least used warehouses, but it is also where the stolen shipment of cocaine came from. Today it will be the place this traitor dies, he explained. He is waiting for us in one of the back rooms. I gulped as Nikolai's men inspected me as he led me past them. They didn't trust me yet as I was an outsider, and their faces made it known. We stopped walking once we reached a set of heavy metal doors at the very end of the warehouse, which needed a passcode to be opened. Come. Nikolai placed a hand on the small of my back and practically shoved me into the room when I hesitated to enter. In a dingy corner was a semi-conscious man tied to a chair who judging by his bruised and bleeding face had clearly been thoroughly beaten prior to our arrival. I nervously twirled my engagement ring around my finger as Nikolai slowly walked over to the mana his prey. I really am disappointed in you. He spoke softly as he trailed a finger down the tip of the terrified man's broken nose. You had so much potential, I would call you by your name but your actions make you unworthy of such an honor in my eyes. So you, boy, are going to tell my why you were foolish enough to go against me if you have any hope of retribution. Who were you working for? I will. Not. 
Speak. The man hissed through gritted teeth. It seems that you've forgotten that I specialize in extracting information. Nikolai smiled darkly before turning to face me. Rosalie, pass me those two knives on the shelf over there. Yes. That one behind you. My eyes remained downcast as I handed him the weapons. I couldn't bring myself to watch what was about to take place. Killing you today won't be a complete waste of my time, after all. Nikolai mused as he ran a knife around the center of the stubbornly silent man's forehead, creating a deep cut in the shape of a snake. Why a snake of all things? By witnessing your death, my naive little Fianca can learn what I do to those who betray and disobey me. So I will ask again, if you wish to live, who do you work for? Bathe in my blood if you want but I will not speak. The man's bloodied face morphed into a grotesque sneer. I might just. Nikolai seemed to actually be considering it. What do you think princessa? Should I? You will join me of course. But what about? You know. Diseases? I gasped in horror. So pure, isn't she? This one had never had blood on her hands before. She doesn't know what bloodlust feels like. He spoke to the man as if he was an old friend. She's just a little girl now, but I will soon mold her into something great. Nikolai suddenly grabbed onto the man's ear and sliced it clean off with minimal effort, spraying blood across his face. I shrieked louder than the screaming man tied to the chair when my fianca held the ear up at me with a manic grin. That was in honor of one of my favorite artists. Nikolai dropped the knife and grabbed my arm when I tried to step away from him, leaving a crimson handprint on my skin. I think I should take the nose now, yes. He mused. Since he took my coke I'll take his nose. Perfect. I stared in horror as he picked up a much bigger knife and held it to the bridge of the man's nose, making a shallow cut. Who do you work for? Nikolai asked again, but received only heavy breathing and a few groans as an answer, while his victim tried as hard as he could to hold back screams. I said. Who? Do. You. Work. For? Nikolai sent a hard slap to the place where the man's ear had been only a few minutes ago, earning a loud guttural cry of agony. Oksana Chernova. Nikolai grinned in triumph as he finally got what he wanted. I work for her. Ah. He put down the knife and pondered in silence, unbothered by the fact that his victim was on the verge of bleeding to death, and blood now covered a great deal of the floor where he stood. Oksana. That filthy fucking whore. I knew it. My face was white as a sheet as Nikolai stalked over to me and stood behind me, before roughly grabbing my chin and forcing me to look at the nearly unidentifiable man. Take a good look at this Kroshka. Little one, this is what enemies of the family become. They deserve nothing less. His sinister whisper raised the hairs on the back of my neck. What I've done to this bastard is child's play compared to what I am capable of. This could easily be you if you make an enemy of me. Never forget that. And then he pulled out a gun and fired several rounds into the man's head, splattering the walls behind him with gore. I squirmed uncomfortably as he raised a bloodied hand and gently touched my cheek. You are a fast learner and have taken this better than I expected. You continue to surprise me every day. Nikolai spoke. You'll be rewarded of course. Good girls always get rewarded. Tomorrow you'll be allowed to go out with Delilah and Ender on a shopping trip. Buy whatever you like, I don't give a fuck. The reward is money a lot of it, and some freedom. Do with it as you please. Twelve. Thirteen. Absolutely not, said Nikolai the second I walked into his office. You are not wearing that out. What's wrong with it? I glanced down at my red mini dress. I don't usually tell my women what to wear but since we aren't married yet... I don't want other men getting ideas. Some uncivilized creatures will see that as not a dress, but rather an invitation. He explained. I don't want you drawing too much attention to yourself when I'm not around. Come on, it's really not that bad. I protested. Bend over and say that again. It barely covers your ass. Now go and change. He ordered. Until we are married you can-